My name's Eileen Robertson. I'm one of the physiologists here at SASE. But we have a, a new hypoxic training chamber here whereby we can actually simulate altitude for the athletes. A number of athletes in a number of sports have used altitude training where they will actually go to natural altitude and live and train there. Now in Australia we don't have any suitable training venues for that so we've actually built our own hypoxic chamber where we can simulate altitude and the athletes can train at about two and a half thousand meters uh, which is where they are currently uh, and we can get to simulate some of those adaptations that they would get if they were overseas. So we can use it in preparation for actually competing at altitude. So that's particularly relevant for cyclists, for example, who will be out in mountainous regions. For most of our athletes, we actually compete at sea level. And so really what we're trying to do here is to get the extra physiological stimulus to get some better training adaptations, which we then hope will translate to a better performance at sea level. So for us to simulate altitude here, we're reducing the percentage of oxygen in the air. And we do that by using a series of filters. So whereas sea level is normally about 20.9%, we'll reduce the oxygen down towards 15%, which then means that as the athletes are training, the body's having to work an awful lot harder to actually maintain the same amount of work, or it's actually having to generate different adaptations in order to be able to uh, cope with this new environment we can set it from sea level up to around 3,000 metres. So we can decide what altitude depending on what outcomes we're looking for. We also have another technology where we allow the athletes to sleep at altitude as well. And this is in the form of a tent. And so by having the tent and the room combination, we can actually do live high and train high as if they were overseas and living in an altitude environment. We can have them living high and training low whereby they sleep in the tent to get the beneficial adaptations but train at sea level. Or we can train high, where the athletes sleep as they normally would at sea level and train in this hypoxic environment. What we're looking to try and get is a change in hematology. So we're trying to increase the number of red blood cells. With more red blood cells, the blood can carry more oxygen around, which then results in a better aerobic performance. The other side of the equation is the non-hematological adaptations, which we call peripheral adaptations. So differences within the body's ability to buffer, which is important for high intensity events, aside from the blood cell one, which is the one most people are familiar with. Now you can use this type of altitude training at different points in the training year, depending on what the outcomes are. So it might be early season to try and get a, an aerobic booster, it might be mid-season to try and top up some other capacities, or it might be pre-competition. We work very closely with the coaches to make sure that it fits into the rest of their training so we can get the most benefits from it.